County Council meetings now in session. The Honorable Michael Johnson will give the pledge and invocation. Let us pray. Lord, bless us tonight and help us in our decision making. Give us the strength to do what is right, not for us as council members, but for the entire county. We pray for our troops and all those in harm's way. We ask that you be with our local law enforcement and bring them all home safely to their families tonight. Guide us and give us the ability to do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business is oath of office. When I call your name, if you'd come forward, uh, Brown Simpson, Rob Youngblood, Trish Johnson, and uh, Alicia Muldrow. Oh, well, huh. I thought that was you, Brown. You look a little younger than me. Good to see you, as always. Thank you. Hey, did you hear about Mickey? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good to see you. <laughs> okay, we had one person sign up for appearances. Billy, welcome. Billy is the director of CBB. Thank you very much. Chairman Blackwell, Council, I certainly do appreciate the opportunity to be here, and as always, thank you for your service to your county. This is my quarterly report on the progress of Visit Your County, also known as the Rock Hill York County Convention and Visitors Bureau. As, as we know, our mission and purpose is to, is to create a thriving travel and tourism economy in your county. Our purpose is to develop an authentic unified identity for your county and to promote the long-term development and marketing of your county as a destination. Now, how tourism impacts your county, it is a significant economic driver. These are our numbers, latest numbers from 2017-2018. We brought in approximately 98,000 hotel room nights, event attendance of approximately 64,000. We booked 436 events with a direct economic impact of $18.2 million up from $16 million the previous year. Now, how do we do that? One way is through group tours. So far since in this current, this current physical year, we started July 1, we've booked 574 room nights inside of group tours, which is 82% of our goal, and we've booked 84 group tours, which is 24% of our goal. Another way that we bring in people to your counties, meetings, and conferences. Now, looking at that area, knowing that, no, that the Baxter Hood Center is no longer available as a meeting or conference center, we're somewhat limited in what we can do inside the county for large-scale meetings. So far for the year, we've booked 880 room nights, which is 25% of our goal, right at $168,000 in economic impact, which is 21% of our goal for this fiscal year. Of course, sports tourism is what everybody thinks about when they think about 
visit your county. So far in 2018, 2019, we have booked 44 events for the fiscal year. Those events will bring in an estimated $7.5 million in economic impact. Now, for we work two, three, four years ahead. So we are currently working on 2020, 2021, because as you can see, we have 54 events booked for 2019, 2020. Those are booked and contracted with an estimated $12.2 million in economic impact for next fiscal year. So we are booked for 2019, 2020. We are now working on 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Leisure travel is over 50% of our business. Currently, so far this fiscal year, we've booked 15,234 room nights, which is one, right at $1.3 million in economic impact. Now that's just since July 1st. Walk-in traffic to our new visitor center has increased by 61.6% as opposed to this time last year at the Baxter Hood Center. We have also responded to 1,018 requests for information. Marketing and communications is another significant part of our business. So far since July 1, we've had right at 1,200 mobile app downloads, which is one of our key components of our marketing and communications. We've had 16 stories published about events, leisure travel, attractions, or partners in York County. We've added right at 1,200 Facebook fans. We now have over 30,000 followers on Facebook. We've po posted 16 original pieces of content for the website. That is the equivalent of a news article. It is a blog post, but it is 16 original pieces of content that's gone to our website since July 1st. We've also produced four videos for distribution on social media and our website. If you follow us on social media, you've noticed a significant increase in what we're doing and the engagement that we're having over the last 60 days. Now, what's new in 2018-2019? The main thing is our, our new visitor center. We hosted our ribbon cutting a few months ago. Here we are cutting the ribbon on the new visitor center. I appreciate uh, Mr. Williams, Mr. Shanahan for coming to the ribbon cutting on, the, on that morning. It is finally here, the Mobile Visitor Center. I feel like that's all I've talked about for the last six months. We actually picked it up an hour and a half before our annual meeting on <laughs> Thursday night. I know that we had a conflict on Thursday night, uh, so none of you were able to be there. We had about 150 people at the Dairy Barn that were able to uh, hear about the success that we had last year, but about an hour and a half before the annual meeting, I picked up the Mobile Visitor Center and that is what it looks like, at least one side of it. And it will roll out to the U.S. Disc Golf Championship this coming Saturday at Winthrop will be the first event for it. We have also restructured our organization. I know I've talked in the past about how we've gone to a, a president, vice president uh, org organizational chart. Uh, we have also, over the last 60 days, parted ways with our advertising agency. Uh, we had been using an advertising agency approximately the last three years. In part of my evaluation of the organization, we have gone away from that agency. We are now doing everything in-house. Uh, we have contracted our digital marketing, so search engine optimization, search engine marketing, uh, with an outside group, Revenflow, if you know Jason Broadwater, in Rock Hill, we are now contracted with them and excited about where we will go with that organization. Um, and just so you know kind of how, you know, we talk about search engine optimization, search engine marketing. In the time period that we cut loose our advertising agency and the time that we picked back up with Jason was about 30 days. Inside of that 30 days, our web traffic went down 30%. So that shows you how significant 
search engine optimization and search engine marketing is for a destination, a, a designated marketing organization. But we've restructured our organization by take, going away from the agency. We were able to hire a digital communications manager. Second from the left is Brianna Francis. Uh, she comes to us from Spartanburg. She was previously a reporter for WSPA, Channel 7. Uh, prior to that, she was a reporter in Myrtle Beach. So she comes with significant experience in social media and digital marketing. Now, we're also focusing more on digital marketing. Uh, prior to me coming in, we were spending about 70% of our funds on digital marketing, 30% on traditional marketing, which is uh, print advertising. This year, we are switching to 90% digital, 10% traditional. And the reason we're doing that is because we can track. We can track our ROI. We can see what works, what doesn't, what brings us traffic, what doesn't, what brings visitors to your county, and what doesn't. So that is in the process of, of happening now. We've also tightened our scope of marketing. Uh, before, we were throwing a wide net all over the country and trying to get people to come to your county. Well, through our research, we have determined that a large percentage of the people that come to your county for leisure travel are from North and South Carolina. So we have tightened that net and we are focusing our marketing efforts on a geographic radius around your county and putting more of our funds there and we are already starting to see the benefits of that. Municipal funding, I am happy to stand before you and tell you that the five, the four municipalities that are on that slide there are now all providing either hospitality tax or accommodations tax to visit your county. The city of Rock Hill is providing accommodations tax. The town of Fort Mill is providing accommodations tax. The city of Tiga Kay is providing hospitality tax funding. And the city of York is providing hospitality tax funding as, as well. Now, where do we go from here? This coming weekend, we're hosting the U.S. Disc Golf Championship at Winthrop University. If you have not been by the Coliseum, please ride by there. It looks like a traditional golf course, and we are excited about that. We're going to roll the Mobile Visitor Center out there on Saturday. So that is coming up this weekend. Now, the Carolina Bass Challenge will be at Ebenezer Park. That is the last weekend in October. Over 200 boats will be there with a first prize of $50,000 to whoever wins the Carolina's Bass Challenge. Now, NCAA and SIEC, which is the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, those two, the NCAA will be hosting their Division I regional cross-country event the first weekend of November, the SIAC will be holding their cross-country tournament, their end-of-season tournament at Winthrop the following weekend. So we have partnered with the SIAC for their track and field championships and their cross-country championships for the next three years. Battle at the Rock, we are really excited about this. This will be at Nation Ford High School. This is a national basketball showcase, high school basketball showcase. These are 19 teams that will come to Nation Ford. We'll play three games on Friday night and eight games on Saturday. This event features the top two high school basketball teams in the country. If you know anything about high school basketball, you've heard of Oak Hill Academy and you've heard of IMG Academy. Both teams will be here for Battle at the Rock. We also have several of the local teams will be participating. We have Dorman, Irmo, Burns, uh, Lower Richland. We have all the top teams in South Carolina will be here. This will be, if you think back to the Cell River Classic that was played at Winthrop, you know, years ago, this is a similar event, just magnified by the level of teams that we're able to bring in. We have five of the top 25 players in the country will be here for this event. This will be national media exposure at Nation Ford High School. Now, if you've read any media over the last week, you've heard of the Yoko Brew Trail. 
this has created a life of its own. We came up with the idea of, of putting together the five local breweries, Windy Hill Orchard <coughs> and Main Street Bottle Shop, and putting them into a, into a brew trail. We did a press conference last Tuesday or last Wednesday to kick this off. We had several media outlets there. This has been picked up by the state newspaper. It's been picked up by several of the Charlotte and Columbia newspapers and television stations. To give you a little bit of an idea on, the, on how this is happening, basically how it works is you download our app, you go, you've got seven locations. When you go, you can check in at the location. If you, once you check in at five of the seven, you come to the visitor center, you get a t-shirt that says Yoko Brew Trail on the front. On the back it says hashtag Yoko Brew Trail and it says I drank my way through York County. So the, the exposure that this thing has gotten has been phenomenal. Just in the last week, we've had 527 people sign up for the brew trail. We've had eight complete the brew trail in less than a week. We had our first group come in 24 hours after we started the trail. It was a, a father and daughter came in less than 24 hours and they had completed the trail. Make sure they had a driver. Yes, that's one thing that we, all, that we, we offer transportation. We also offer the local restaurants within the area. We've had 740, 742 app downloads just in the month of September. Our app sessions went from 76 in August to 3,069 in September. So this is serving a couple of purposes. One, it's in crea creating traffic on our app, which is one of our emphasis for this year. It is also creating business for these local breweries, the restaurants that are around these breweries, and the transportation to get people from point A to point B. So we are excited about where the, the Yoko Brew Trail is going. Like I said, it's kind of, it's, it's in fast forward because we weren't exactly expecting the reaction that we got, but it has been significant. I think you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to play it. I'll be glad to answer any questions that anybody has. Questions for Billy? Uh, Mr. Roddy. I have a couple of questions. What's the dates on the uh, Battle of the Rock? Battle of the Rock is November 30th, December 1st, Friday night and all day Saturday. Starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday, last game's at 9. Okay. And you mentioned about the funding from the uh, different municipalities um, throughout the county. Are we anticipating an increase or decrease or everything's kind of staying the same from for tax that they're contributing well we saw in in the rock hill funding which is that which is a tax we saw an increase in funding from them we saw an inc a significant increase from fort mill because um, we're the designated 30 percent dmo for fort mill so we they actually more than doubled their funding um Tiga K has never given us funding before. They gave us 3% of their hospitality tax. And York has never funded us before either. They gave us approximately 3% of their hospitality tax too. Now the, the 436 events that, that you say we, we, we've done or I think it was maybe last year. Or mm -hmm. That was last year. 
are those CVB events, or does that take into consideration what Rock Hill's doing, Fort Mills? Is that That's any event that we're involved with, okay. which we're either, how, how we're either involved is we either put the event on or we assist in the funding or the recruitment of it. Now, if it's, let's say it's um, the barbecue festival this past weekend, we had no part in that for the city of Rock Hill, so that doesn't, we don't count that. Uh, but if it's an event that we participate in, if we're one of the, you know, if we're providing funding to help bring it here, if we're uh, assisted in the recruiting of it to come here, or we put it on, that counts as those 436 events. I have a question. Yes, Ms. Um, are the, the local breweries, I think that's a great idea. And I can I can kind of see why you I'm planning my weekend out here, but um, um, everybody loves a t-shirt. But um, is that a is that a um, a revenue stream for the CVB also? No. So no. they don't. There's no pay, there's no pay to play. No, it's just like in, it's just like any other attraction. Okay. You know, we don't charge Carol Wims, we don't charge Wendy Hill, we don't charge anybody. Uh, so it's it's a tourism driver for us because we're marketing this thing around North and South Carolina in the key areas that are craft beer enthusiasts. Are there, so are, were there five or seven on that? There's five breweries, seven participants, because Main Street Bottle Shop and Wendy Hill are also on there. And then Slow Play is on there, even though they're not open yet. They're not listed on the website. They're listed on our rack card. They're opening on Halloween, and they will be a part of the trail once that happens. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, well, um, okay. On the, uh, the the brew trail, um, I know I was just asking Robert. I saw Wendy Wendy Hill on there. Did y'all ever consider putting Cat's Paw Winery, or was that just for beer? We what? did it just for beer and cider. We did have some discussion about Wendy Hill. One was their loc. I mean, not Wendy Hill. Uh, Cat's Paw. We did have some discussion about that. Um, their location was was one hindrance because it being in a neighborhood and and creating a lot of traffic but it was also we haven't ventured into wines yet uh, because we're also talking to grapevine about that as well so i think that will come but we just started with breweries mr winkler and i just had a question on the app and as far as i know anybody that has an event can get it on the app but i believe they can pay to get it optimized if they want it like top of the page when you go to the app or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we've got... It's, um, it's free for anybody that wants to put an event there, but they can't... I think that's the mis misunderstanding sometimes because people say, well, they got to pay. Well, if they want it optimized and they want it at the top of the app, when you open the app, then they pay for that. We do have some digital marketing internally that, we're, that, we, have to, that we have put together that was together before I came, but we're not really actively pushing that uh, because we're we're trying to focus on the things that we do right now and trying to do them extremely well uh, and we just haven't ventured out into in, into anything else but that option is available yes anybody thank you Bill thank you very much it. no one signed up for public forum so do we have a motion <laughs> on consent agenda move to approve second discussion all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Public hearing rezoning action to rezone RUD to BD3 at Gene, uh, whoops, at 1726 Zora Road in the Fort Mill community. And this is just a public hearing, no action tonight. Thank you, sure. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, case 1817, applicant and owner Gene Evans is requesting to rezone an acre for, located at the corner of Gold Hill Road and, one, and Highway 160 from RUD to BD3. Site is currently, as stated, the site is currently zoned RUD. It's adjacent to RUD to the west, uh, urban development UD district to the east, and commercial to the south. Um, the U, let's see, um, the comprehensive plan designation is mixed use center. There are no unusual circumstances on the site that would prohibit future development and uh, there's one existing building on the site as well as um, some parking of existing facilities. 
that is my summary of the proposal. Thank the applicant's you. actually um, expanding their business to, or they're rezoning to ex support expanding their business. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody here want to speak against? Against? Anybody want to speak in favor? Have a motion to close? Move close. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Next item. Hold public hearing. This is an action item. Uh, case number 1819, UD rezoning project. 18, yeah, you skipped one. Number two. Oh, did I skip one? Up, oh, sorry, I did skip one. Uh, hold, okay, this is case number 1818, uh, rezoned from BD1 to RC1 at 373 Forest Way Drive in the Fort Mill community. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, Case 1818, the applicant and owner is Richard Edwards. They're proposing to rezone 2.17 acres of BD1. It's actually with conditions to RC1. Um, this is to support uh, a future residence. The applicant has an existing single family dwelling on the property. Um, this would bring, actually bring that use into compliance with the current zoning, as well as uh, potentially support a future um, land division. Um, the property is located in the Forest Lake subdivision. There is, an, as I stated, there's an existing single family dwelling on the site. Um, adjacent zoning is RC1 um, and BD1. Uh, land use designation is neighborhood commercial. Uh, there are no unusual circumstances within the site to prohibit any future lot splits if the applicant chose to go forward. That concludes my summary of the proposal. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody here want to speak against this proposal? Anybody want to speak in favor? Move close. Second. Discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, next item, case number 1819, UD rezoning project. Anybody here want to speak? Yes, sir. Mr. No, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay, I uh, want to speak uh, against this UD rezoning. Anybody want to? Will you just um, kind of, um, I've had a lot of calls about this because people didn't understand what it was. Will you just kind of just summarize real quickly what, what it is? Well, I mean, if you, if you want to go ahead, okay. since that was okay. your concern. So the, the county has eliminated the UD zoning, co the zoning code and this um, is just the, everybody that had those, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but anybody that had, that was zoned, whose property was zoned in, as UD, um, since we're doing away with that, they were sent a letter and then we had a public hearing in each area to let these people rezone their property um, at no cost. And if they chose to wait, there would be a cost later if they needed to rezone or anything. But um, I had a lot of calls because most of these were on Montgomery Road, so people thought there was gonna be a lot of things built there. And, <laughs> as you know, normally what happens in Lake Wiley. But anyway, there was nothing to worry about. It was just um, bas basically bringing these properties up to, up to date with, the, um, with where they should be zoned now. With the future land use plan. The future land use plan, yes, that's right, thank you. Um, anybody here want to speak against? Anybody want to speak in favor? Move to close. Second. Discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Do we have a new motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, council hold a public hearing and approve third reading of an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a fee in lieu of tax agreement by and between York County, South Carolina and WPM Holdings, LLC with respect to certain economic development property in the county whereby such property will be subject to certain payments in lieu of taxes and other matters related thereto. Anybody here want to speak against? Anybody want to speak in favor? Yes, sir. And just remember to give you name and address. Okay. My name is John Dennis. Uh, current home is in Florida, 3531 Grand Tuscany Way, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I'm here representing uh, Wheel Pros. I'm vice president of manufacturing. So I'll be here running this new plant that all of you folks have supported us uh, bringing our business here. So, welcome to York County. Thank you. And uh, that's what I wanted to say first was 
to uh, thank you. Rather than introduce myself, it's more important to thank, thank you. Also to thank David um, for, David Swenson for helping encourage the business uh, to come here. So having that warm welcome is, uh, it was a big part of the decision making because there were some other options on the table uh, for Wheel Pros and, and the private equity company. So first of all, I want to thank you. I uh, appreciate you bringing the 273 jobs here. Yep, absolutely. So just to give everyone a little bit of flavor of Wheel Pros, so we will be uh, producing wheels. American Eagle was producing wheels there, and uh, the plant went dormant as the business started to fall. The great news about Wheel Pros, they are selling 1.6 million wheels right now uh, in the United States and across the world. They're bringing all those wheels from China. So all we are is be as good as we can be. If we can build up 1.6 million wheels, then we'll sell 1.6 million wheels out of that plant. That's the great news is it's already selling. So we just need to make them. So that's the difference uh, that success is, uh, is in front of us. Do you want to speak to? Yep, just want to say thank you again, reiterate that. Uh, appreciate all the work David Swenson and his team have done. Uh, be proud of the community. We really appreciate your consideration. Uh, thank we you. We appreciate what you are doing for the county. And if I could, since it's my district, I just want to say thank you as well. We appreciate it coming into District 3. So um, that we always like to see when an empty a building goes dormant, somebody come in and pick it back up and thank you all for that. Robert, tell the public what district, what area that is. Um, it's East York Industrial Park here down off Highway 5 in York. Um, so it's, it's District 3, the western part of the county. Um, and so uh, that's one of the things that we try real hard to get more jobs in the western side of the county for people. So thank you all. You're welcome. Thank you both. Yep. Appreciate it. Anybody else want to speak in favor? Motion to close. Move to close. Second. Discussion. All those favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Do we have a new motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. All those favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Next item. Council Mr. Mr. Chairman, excuse me for yes, interrupting. Yes, sir. If I could briefly return to item number three in public hearings. We believe there were two motions made on that, one to close the public hearing and the second to give first reading. Just in the event that there was a first reading motion, I'd request that somebody move to rescind okay. that motion and we'll have first reading at the next council meeting. I rescind that motion. Second. Okay. So what do you want us to do now? Make just a vote. Just if we're in discussion, can I just ask a question just in process on these UD rezonings? It's my understanding that the, the zoning that we're going to was not only approved by staff in terms of it being um, consistent with the comp plan, but that it is also consistent with what the, the owners have requested and that there are no owners who object to the future rezonings. Is, is that accurate? I'm seeing a, a yes, yes nod from Steve. So, Michael, you want a motion on the rescind? In motion? the event there was a motion to give first reading, the, the motion it to was. rescind would be yeah, to. I rescind it. I made it. I rescind it. Okay. Okay. And then we need a vote on that motion after the discussion. The new motion. No, the, the, the motion to rescind. It's motion, motion to rescind. To, okay, just that. Okay. The, Can you just get Steve to clarify and make sure yes, the record's sir. clear on that? I want to ask, answer uh, Council Member Cox's question. And t t as far as we know, everyone's in support. Uh, we've gone off of the application forms that we've received, and we've uh, been very careful not to proceed w if we haven't had full support. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I have a quick Mr. question. Mr. Roddy. Steve. Steve. If you don't mind. <laughs> You're up here. You, you did it. Actually, the, the note I just passed you, I think that gentleman was actually going through, uh, his property got um, script of residential in a UD zone, and, and that's, that's part of the okay. deal I gave you. So when you follow up with him, Yes, sir. I will contact him tomorrow and, okay. and figure out where he's at with that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, question on the motion. All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And, Michael, that's all you needed. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was making sure I was reading it first. Okay. Council to hold a public hearing and consider the third reading of an ordinance to authorize the refund of the county government portion of overpaid taxes for the legal residents identified as tax map number 72003010066 and to provide for other matters related thereto. Move to approve. Wait, wait a minute, we've got a public, public hearing first. I'm ready to fire it off. Um, I hear you. Um, anybody here want to speak against? Uh, against? Yes, sir. And remember to give your name and address. 
Good evening. <coughs> Welcome. My name is Pierre Langevin. I live in Fort Mill. And I am the chairman of the Board of Assessment Appeal of York County. I am here this evening to ask those of you on the county board who seems to, in favor of granting a refund for what you describe as overpaid taxes in reference to tax map number 720-0301066 to reconsider that decision and vote no. The Board of Assessment Appeals function by virtue of legislations enacted by the state of South Carolina and as such has received training to perform their function in accordance with the law and statute currently in force. The Board of Assessment Appeals has previously determined that the county tax assessor was correct in its decision and handling of this case. Since my appointment on this board, and to the best of my knowledge, there has been at least a dozen similar cases brought to our attention. And in each one of them, the board has found that the tax assessors acted properly in the determination of the proper tax to pay and how far back it could reimburse in accordance with the law. Such law was written with the express purpose of limiting the liability of the county, as well as to make a man when applicable. To go in the direction that you are considering will not only expose the county to further similar requests, but will open the door for anyone with a belief that they have been overcharged to ask for a refund, thus exposing yourself to potential discrimination if you give to one but not to the other, in addition to enshrining precedents on this matter. May I remind you that in every case coming to our attention, the bottom line is that the appellant wants to reduce its tax burden. For you to approve such ordinance will place our board in an untenable position the next time a similar case comes in front of us. And there will be others, I am sure. Are we then supposed to tell the appellant and the assessor's office that we cannot hear their case because county council is now in the habit of making such decision instead? Unlike the first case unknown to us on the appeal board, where you refunded what you considered overtax, overpaid taxes, this one has been widely publicized making front page of our county local newspapers. To continue in that direction is a call for all past similar cases to knock at your door for a reversal. What criteria are you to use to say yay or nay? The appeal process must follow its normal course and not be subject to reversal by county after a decision has been made. If you are concerned about citizen being overcharged, the proper remedy is for you to act before the Board of Assessment Appeals is convened. Hear all the evidence and make a decision, not after. And to prevent similar issues, the proper remedy is to require the tax assessor's office to include a notice in large print with every tax bill and or assessment notice if the tax rate is to be used, if the tax rate to be used is to be any other than what it should normally be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else want to speak against? Anybody want to speak in favor? 
Yes, sir. My name is Morgan Glenn, and I reside at 648 Lansdowne Court, Fort Mill, South Carolina. I am the third party who overpaid $36,000. It was brought to my attention in February when I was about to put the house on the market. When we purchase a home in York County for $300,000, in 07 when I bought my home, they did not present you with a application to apply for a primary residence. I guess they automatically assume that it's a secondary home. But I've never been so blessed as to have a secondary home that cost $300,000. So when I did find uh, the overpayment, uh, I saw the last instance that was on the front page news and how uh, Councilman Roddy and uh, you council members helped that lady and gave her a refund. But you're talking about $10,000 and they gave her two more years, which probably accounted to two grand. We're talking about $36,000 and no longer do they do the application process the same. If you purchase a home today, at closing, they give you that application. They don't send it to you through the mail and God forbid if you miss it, you're paying 6% as opposed to 4%. So this shouldn't happen to anyone else, but I would challenge the council members that even if it did, God forbid, if they show you documentation and you see that they overpaid, open the doors for everyone and give them their money back if you see that they overpaid because we have in God we trust on the wall. We want to do what's right. We're not asking you to give something that you don't deserve, but if somebody overpaid, they should be reimbursed what they were overpaid or say, you know what, we're not going to give them their money back, but they don't ha have to pay taxes until they eat up the overpayment that they paid. That's just the only thing that I would consider godly and fair. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Anybody else want to speak in favor? You, uh, just to point out to the public and to remind council, the ordinance before council is for two additional fiscal years, fiscal year 15 and fiscal year 14. Right, which the ordinance allows. Yes. Okay. Uh, Question, I mean, move to we have a Okay, do we have a second? Second. Uh, question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Do we have a new motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Roddy. I want to make a quick point of reference um, <clears throat> to some of what's been presented here today. And I'm not going to beat the point up, um, but the Assessment Board of Appeals should have never even heard these, this particular case. That's why the Assessment Board of Appeals didn't hear the last case. And we pondered on the last several meetings how this case ended up before them anyway. Even if the Board of Appeals had uh, agreed to do it, they couldn't do it because that's not in their preview. They're not supposed, they're not set up to hear these cases. This comes to County Council because this is the avenue. County Council is the only one that can approve a refund above and beyond the two years. And that's why the last case came here and that's why we were able to ultimately make the decision to do what we did. Um, and, and just as Mr. Johnson opened up our prayer before, before the meeting, give us the wisdom to do what's right. And I think this is partly, in part, the right thing to do. It won't make this gentleman whole and give him back 37,000, but it says that this body recognizes the situation and is willing to do what we can do. And there's not too many times that we're able to do the right thing because sometimes we do hide behind well if the law says we could do it we would do it the law says we can do this in a portion and it's only right for us to take advantage of the portion that we are able to do we can't make this gentleman hold for thirty-seven thousand, but let's do the right thing let's do the godly thing and not the political thing and do what we can do to make this somewhat right he's not going to walk away with everything but at least he can walk away with the comfort knowing that we've done what we can do because there's going to come a time that this body is going to say, if the law would allow me to do it, sir or ma'am, we would do it. And in this case, the law says that we can do it. So I'm asking council to go ahead and approve this and do what we can do for this gentleman. Anybody else? 
I, yes, I, Mr. Johnson. With Mr. Madden. In 2007, was it the policy of the county to send anyone who purchased a home a residential form to apply for the 4% tax rate? Yes, sir. And as the um, deputy assessor stated a couple meetings back, they had the date that that was sent out as well. That's all on file. Is it the opinion of the assessor that we that this council should not give this refund? I don't think he can answer that. He cannot speak for the assessor. Well, I'm, I'm he cannot I'm, speak for the assessor. Well, he actually assessor stood up here and, and told us. I heard. No, that was not the assessor. The assessor didn't even come. He sent someone else. And let's remember, the last time the assessor agreed to do this, this council ridiculed him and he resigned over it. That was, part of the, that was part of the wrong that happened the last time we heard this case. That assessor stood here and said he agreed with giving a refund, and this council ridiculed him to the point that he resigned from York County. So let's don't anticipate another assessor standing here saying, let's do it, because he will face the same ridicule. Okay. Well, Mr. Johnson got the floor. To the best of your knowledge, <laughs> is it the assessor's opinion that the council should not give this refund? Yes, sir. Thank you. I guess I have a follow-up question to that. Ms. Cox. Um, and first of all, I'd like to, to thank, uh, I'm going to mispronounce your last name, but Chairman Pierre, I want to thank you for coming here. I want you to understand that I think all the council members up here appreciate the work that all of the members on that board do. And I think I do take issue with the fact that this should have not been an issue that came before you. You simply, as according to our county attorney, you simply don't have the authority and the discretion to do anything more than what you've done. So I, I can understand where you would feel um, as if you, you feel as if the council is doing something different, but that simply is not the case. The question that's being asked is, should we extend this beyond two years? Only can come from council. <coughs> so in terms of process, I do take issue with how you got the question, and I'm concerned about that, and I, I think that process sh should change in going forward. Um, there's been a lot of questions talking about whether or not this is, sets a precedent. In my opinion, it does not. Each of these is fact specific. The totality of the circumstances justify whether or not, and these seven members have to make the decision as to whether or not under the totality of the circumstances, whether or not it makes sense to issue the additional two years. Um, so I think the idea that this is somehow going to cause some um, precedent setting issue is completely wrong from a legal perspective. Um, in looking at the, the issues before me, I think with the amount in controversy, with the explanation that we've been given, um, with the fact that we've not been told by anyone that this is going to put the county coffers at um, risk, that there is that there are funds to, to return these funds, that, sh that with all of those things considered, I think it's the appropriate thing to do to extend that for two years in, in this instance. Ms. Love. Yeah. I just think it's real important that the county have a cross check at some point. There's got to be a way. You've got to know, and if you don't, we probably should know, you know, who has two properties, who has one property. There's got to be some kind of cross reference for that. And, and um, when, it, when it comes to, you know, I represent people. And um, I, I represent people, and I stand up for York County. And when it comes to the county versus the people, I'm going to always side with the people. We're not talking about giving a gentleman back $36,000. We're talking about a few hundred dollars. The, the time and the conversation and the energy from, the, from, from you and from the council and everything that's gone into this <coughs> outweighs the little <coughs> bit of money that we're paying back to one of our residents. And, and I, I think that, you know, I'm a business person, and, I, and I've said this before because, like I said, we've talked about this way too long and way too many times. <coughs> um, but I'm a business person, and we, we have rules, and we have laws, and we, we have things that protect us as a business. And when we have the opportunity to, to, to waive something or to do the right thing for our customers or our residents who are all one and the same, I mean, these are, these are customers of York County right here. They're buying utilities, and they're, 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 they're all here for a reason tonight, um, and, and they don't work for York County for the most part. They live in York County, and it is very, very, very important that we always do the right thing for the people that live in this county. So I'm happy to, to vote to, to give back any individual in this, in this situation their money. And if you polled this crowd, they would probably say the same thing, because they could very possibly in the, be in the same shoes that he's in at some point. 
Uh, just to wrap it up, you know, when this happened, I guess it was 2007, you said? I can't remember the exact year. But That's when I purchased the home here, sir. Okay. I think it was about that time when the law changed, but I can't remember. But, um, you know, people do fall through the cracks. I can certainly see how you weren't made aware of the situation. And, uh, and what I see as being fair, I'm on to uh, side with the uh, taxpayer. Question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Thank you. Uh, next item, <coughs> Council of Public Hearing, consider third reading of ordinance to amend the York County Code of Ordinances, Chapter 155, Zoning Code, so as to provide for an amendment to Section 155.022, Agricultural Conservation District, AGC, Section 155.037, Agricultural Conservation District 1, AGC 1, Section 155.047, Rural Development District, RUD. Section 155.062, Rural Development District 1, RUD. One, to provide for an amendment to event venue and large capacity event venue to establish specific hours that amplified music and other sound may be permitted as a special exceptions in AGC, AGC 1, RUD, RUD 1 districts, and to provide for other matters related thereto. Anybody here want to want to speak against? <clears throat> Anybody want to speak in favor? Move to close. Second. Discussion. All those favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Do we have a new? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. I have yes, sir. Mr. Roddy. Would there be any limitations as to how many permits someone can go receive to to do the amplified sound? These aren't. A, I believe maybe, these maybe, are not maybe. on a like a as event basis this approves this venue Holy. to have that done i believe okay okay yeah. uh, miss cox as as i understand it this we're, we're at third reading on this but that one of the main changes was to change the time frame as to when music can be played and it, it's going to operate as as a standard across the board to 11 p.m is that correct is that a yes yes is that is that does that give the flexibility to this? I mean, all of these are still special exceptions. Is that right? This use is a special exception. I'm seeing a yes nod. Does this give the flexibility to, to the board to, to make a determination or by default, is it always 11 o'clock? I can't, can you <coughs> give us some feedback, Steve or whoever? Yes, there could be an additional special, I mean, uh, requirement placed on by the ZBA to make it something less than 11 p.m. So the ZBA can make that decision based right. on circumstances. Right. Okay, thank you. You're good. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, there is no old business and new business. Council to consider first reading to amend the code of the County of York, South Carolina, Chapter 155. Sections 155.09 and 155.428C in order to amend the definition of major roads to comply with SCDOT standards, to increase the minimum lot width standards for new residential development on major roads from 100 feet to 350 feet, to invoke the pending ordinance doctrine, to provide for a public hearing, and to provide for other minors related thereto. Got a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Williams. Yeah, just this the serial serial lot splits is what we're trying to address. And I understand this is the first step. I'm going to talk to the staff. To me, this this uh, doesn't address it so much as it just makes the, the lots that are split out bigger. But I understand that we're coming with with some some more uh, changes to the ordinance uh, to address the uh, serial lot splits. Um, anybody? This kind of relates to for the public curb cuts. You have so many curb cuts, it kind of cuts them down to help the efficiency of traffic flow. Question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, Council to approve J.D. Goodrum contract amendment number one, totaling $3,426,804 for Lake Wiley Recreation Park. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. 
Question on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item, council to approve change order number one with Leitner construction and the not to exceed amount of $187,272 in additional costs associated with fire alarm devices for the Moss Justice Center expansion project phase two. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Um, I, I just want to make a, a point. I appreciate all the hard work, work Cummings doing that kind of catches this stuff and deals with these problems. It's a little disheartening to me, though, that uh, fire alarm devices with the architect, that wasn't something that they kind of uh, grabbed from the start, but uh, we're still under budget, and I know you have to move forward. So uh, question on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, council to approve change order number two with Leitner Construction and the not to exceed amount of $286,142 and additional costs associated with security enhancements for the Moss Justice Center Expansion Project Phase 2. Hello? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Um, I won't repeat myself, but same issue of concern I have. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Council to approve creation and funding of two new positions in the Planning and Development Department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item. Council to approve creation and funding of the Lake Wiley Recreation Park Superintendent. Motion. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item. Council discussion regarding the Bethel Fire Tax District Board. Council member Allison Love wanted to discuss this. So it's been. Um, a year and ten months, eight nine months today, um, and I just wanted to um, to get council to support me in putting together a, um, a another fire tax board for the um, taxpayer oversight with Bethel um, Volunteer Fire Department, and um, you know one of the things that we have not discussed as, as a council, and, and we've had a lot of the Finance and Operations Committee has had a lot of um, applications for people who want to be on the boards who are actually on the volunteer fire departments and um, so we haven't we haven't actually determined how many people on a board should be volunteer firemen or should be with that fire department um, but in in the case of Bethel I would like to ask that I be able to um, take applications for a fire tax board and we would limit that um, to one person on that board going forward I know it means we're having to rewrite that ordinance and Change, change what we undo what we did to undo what was going on but um i just i think it's in the best interest of um the taxpayers in that tax district kevin thinks you said a one person board she, she meant one I, person no. from the one volunteer they department. would only we would only we would only have one person from the fire department on the basically board. one firefighter on on our tax board yeah, I'm, I'm glad that was clarified same question i have we have a one person board now <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Essentially, you're right. Yeah. I don't have any, Mr. Objection. Johnson. Um, I don't have any objection to reinstating the uh, the Bethel Fire Tax District Board. It's been 16, 18 months. 16, 18 months. Um, we're coming to the completion of our fire plan study. We're kind of wrapping all of that up. It, there's some there's some logic. Um, I think as we are moving forward, I think what Miss Love just asked as a general question needs to be addressed by council as a whole is what do we view as a conflict? Is it a conflict when five of the five tax board members are either volunteer or paid firefighters? Is it a conflict when you get, is there a number that we view it as a conflict? Would we prefer it just to be citizens who are not involved? If it's gonna be citizens who aren't involved, you're gonna have a lack of a certain amount of what actually happens at a fire department. But I think this council needs to address that because I will tell you, we have a backlog um and sitting in committee to to be put on these boards because we've been waiting for this this to play out it looks like it's going to play out and that none of these boards are going to be eliminated we're about to start putting people on and i can tell you the vast majority of the people who apply for these jobs that i see at least are either volunteers or they're paid by paid by a fireman inside that department um i think that is something as a council we need to have a discussion on because when we start pushing out uh, nominees to the full council um, y'all need to realize what that that 
may look like, uh, especially, and we have several boards which are down to, they only have three members. That, you know, they, they literally have to have everybody there to have a quorum now, and we need, we need to fill some of these boards, so. Do you know, uh, probably don't, the makeup of present fire tax boards as far as how many are firemen? Mm -hmm. It depends on a board-to-board -board basis. Um, I can tell you at, say, Riverview, which I'm a little more uh, used to, um, at one point, you, um, I think four of the five were either volunteer, were volunteers basically there at some point. And so now that's whittled down to, I don't believe there's any, I think all three are independent people. I don't have a, you know, I don't have a problem with appointing someone who has been a volunteer or is a volunteer at a station per se. I just, we were, we had, we were having boards that were dominated by that group, um, which there is a question, does that then make, give the, the firehouse chief a de facto control over the board because he controls the volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 there, and there's a certain, yeah. there's something to be said for that. And we, yeah. I think we, there's something we have to, we have to balance that on our, ourselves, but it'd be nice if our committee had some feedback from full council so we can start putting these people out of committee. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Your, the, I can speak specifically to, to um, for Newport. Um, they have, right now they have three current um, volunteers on their board and there have there are two applicants who are also both volunteers who how, have applied many, to be uh, so it would be five it's a board. five person board five. so it would be an all mm -hmm. firefighter five person board it, okay mr williams yeah to, to me that discussion explains why i think it's a little bit premature to uh to put the to, to reinstate a board when we when we uh disbanded it last year i thought it was a step forward in the right direction or as part of the process and was, was expecting it to, didn't expect the process to take this long, but was expecting at the end of the process we would know exactly how to set a board up if, if the board was the way to go. And like you say, I certainly don't think three years from now if everybody else has a board and Bethel doesn't that that's fair. <coughs> but I think as part of the process, while, while we're learning, this is a, the, we have the opportunity to use the Bethel board to, to, to help us learn. Um, when we disbanded them, I told everybody on that board that it didn't have anything to do with the people, the, mid, the members of the board, and it didn't. To, to me, nothing, not a whole lot's changed other than the makeup of the board. And, and for me, the, the, the vote wasn't to replace the board. Uh, the vote was to the, the, the process of being able to use the board to, to make the entire fire services better. So I, I still think it's uh, premature and, and, and don't support it. Um, Mr. Roddy, I have a question. Are are we missing any key decisions or anything suffering as a result of not having this in place of, as far as some safety situations, purchase situations, or, or well, the, what I we guess miss the, without it? Well, no. let, let me hang on a second. Let me look at uh, Andy or Bill. Do y'all have an opinion on this in that regard for like a point Mr. Roddy is making? My, my opinion on this is um, when, when this was brought up to me that this might be coming up on, on this agenda, I, I got with staff and I said, if we did this, what would it hurt? Would we hurt the county? Would we step back and, and so on and so forth? And the response I got was no, uh, you know, it's not going to change how we're moving forward with the study. It's not gonna hurt anything in that aspect. In addition to purchasing and stuff, you know, right now, me being the tax board and the county manager, you know, I make a decision and then it comes to me for approval. Uh, if, if the board was created, then it would go back to the way it used to be where the decision would be made by the tax board and then it would come to myself and my staff to, to see if it move forward. How about you, Andy? You got anything to add? Uh, so, Ms. so, hang on, I'm gonna go down the line. I'll be back to you. Uh, did I see you? Yeah. All right, Robert. Um, <coughs> this has been a, a little bit of a tough thing for me because I usually, I always try to, where I can, support the council member that represents the area because I believe they re they know their district better than the rest of us do. Um, but as Mr. Williams said. I didn't think that this was a move to remove the Bethel Tax Board just to replace them with another board at some point in the future. There were issues in the Bethel Fire Department um, that we heard about as council members and stuff, and I'm not sure. I haven't been told yet that all those issues have been taken care of, that that, that situation has corrected itself to a point of putting another one in. I don't want it to appear that we just had a vendetta against the five members that were there before we kicked them out, and now we're putting five more in that 
maybe the current council member likes better than the last five. Um, so I do agree that at some point, if we're going to keep fire tax boards, we need to put one back in. But I would like to see us figure out what those boards look like, what the fire services looks like, and that type of thing before we move forward with that. So I think it's a little premature for me at this point to support it. So. Um. Ms. Cox? At this point, I mean, we do have a fire study where there are substantial changes that are being made. And in my mind, if there's no objection from our county manager and from our fire services department as to putting um, a new board with different restrictions in place, um, then I, I certainly don't have an issue with that. In order for that to be effective, we have to have three, we have to have an ordinance with three readings. Um, I don't see anything wrong with, you know, if there are recommendations that the signed memo and understanding of agreement between the county and um, the new, bo new board or the fire department needs to be executed before that's done. I think that makes sense. And if, you know, if one of the differences in that board is to have one, it, it limit that special tax board to one person from the volunteer um, side of that helps to address some of the concerns that originally resulted in needing to do that, then that makes sense. In terms of the broader question, though, as to how many folks who are, who are involved in the um, fire service can be on the board, to me, our special tax boards are important, and they serve vo on a volunteer basis, and I see nothing wrong with us having at least two uh, members of a five-person board be on that. I mean, if you're looking at some of the other boards that we have where we put developers and all of that on there, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense for us not to allow the folks who have the expertise who are in there dealing with it day in and day out to have a voice as long as it's not a, a majority voice then I don't see <clears throat> what what concern there would be um, from council that the decision making is being made in, in with a conflict of interest but I mean I guess have we ever gotten a clear answer from the legal? distinction would be between the volunteer and the paid employee uh, the paid employee would be a master servant relationship that would be prohibited but the volunteer is a class uh, in and of itself of many similarly situated persons which don't have a direct uh, oversight over the paid like the paid employee so that would be the distinction so the volunteers though I mean there's no legal conflict of interest there with the volunteers, Not with the volunteers. Can, serve, can serve on there okay that's love so um I forgot exactly what I was gonna say but um there, I'm there's. Sure you appreciate Ms. Scott's point. I do, yes, I do appreciate that. I appreciate, that. Um, I appreciate any support of Bethel Volunteer Fire Department and what I'm trying to do tonight. Um, because one of the things that, that you ask, um, you know, the county manager is what 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 is the effect? Well, there is not a a negative effect to putting a board back in place. But one of the things is he's having to attend the meetings out there. So so that's just an that's an additional meeting where he's going and. There's no reason for Bethel to be any different than the other fire departments in the district. Um, you know, I personally think that one fire, one volunteer is is plenty. I think two is fine. So I, if 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 this council decides to say, hey, let's let's allow two people on a board, I'm perfectly happy with that. It's just that for the board for for Bethel, I'd like for that to be to be one person. Um, but I want to point out to those of you who are not going to support me on this tonight that you are prohibiting me from allowing the taxpayers who. All of our boards are set up so that the taxpayers have oversight over these tax boards, and you are prohibiting me from allowing those people to to have that oversight. And um, the next group that you will hear from will be the um, Lake Wiley um, taxpayers on this. So um, I just I just think it's in the best interest of everybody. Um, the fire department, we know we don't have any issues. We everything is running very smoothly at Bethel. We don't there are no issues there. Um, there weren't that many issues to begin with um, within the fire department itself. So. We are adding new volunteers every month. We've added, I don't know, Don, maybe like 10, 10 volunteers um, this year. Maybe, probably, I think more than that. But um, so we are, we are in a um, gaining volunteer mode right now. And um, I just, um, you know, um, I feel like, you know, one of the things that this council doesn't do always well is support the council members in their own district. And, you know, I, I live there. I take all the calls for that district. I know what is best. I am very firm. I'm able to, I am able to deliver bad news to somebody in my district, and I'm not looking for um, a tax board to um, make things any easier on the Bethel Volunteer Fire Department. 
So um, I would just appreciate your support in getting that board put back in place. Otherwise, we need to move to disband your boards because there's no reason for District 2 to be any different from your districts. Mr. Roddy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is not a, is this going to be a, this is not a voting issue tonight, no, just for discussion right now. This is kind right of a point so, of direction that we're going. So in order to make this happen for uh, Council Member Love, will we have to vote this back into place or would this be like a? Uh, Looks like uh, enough direction to start moving forward. It's not three, three readings of public hearing for an ordinance and you need to give direction to the manager right, to get that action, going. It's just direction. Okay, so I, and my thing would be if, if she wants to, to bring this before the, the full body to, to see in a voting capacity because when, when if I was to have an issue you know we can sit here and say we'll support something or we won't support something but ultimately your vote speaks for you and if you're not going to support her and her district that should be in the form of a, a yay vote or a no vote right. so if it has to go through the three readings and public hearing all that stuff to put that board back in place and I do agree with her if other districts have tax boards we shouldn't treat her district any different if she has to volunteers to staff a board or she feels her her district is being slighted in some way and we've heard that it won't be uh, anything advantageous if we did put it back in place and if we decide to to go a different direction once the study's done we can always undo what we undo it um, but I think that would be across the board for other other districts as well uh, I, I do side with her with saying if District four has one, district three has one, district two has one, why can't her district have one? So I would I would support her in that capacity and if it takes two people to, to get it on the agenda to, to do the three readings, to go through the motions, whether it's voted up or down, I say let's do it and I'll be the second council member to say let's put it on the agenda. Let, let's uh, go ahead and wrap this up by saying that uh, I think both concerns can win. I, I think it's logical. I mean, my logic was, well, all the other districts have them and when the staff said, no, I don't see an issue with this, so that kind of opened the door for me, but Mr. Winkler and Chad made great points. So I think the staff can come back with a um, well thought out proposal that uh, follows uh, Mr. Winkler and Mr. Williams' concern, and uh, when it's ready in a proper thought out way, then it can be presented to us. Hey, Mr. Chairman, can, yes, we, can we address the how many yes. volunteers? Yes. Because I, that, right. Because if you create, if, if we create it, and then we start trying to vote them out of Absolutely. committee, I can't vote them out of committee right. without some guidance. That's and why so we have three readings. That's why we have three readings. Yeah, but they're going to want to. They're going to together. want to. I think start voting them through before uh, oh. that last one, right. so that they kind of <laughs> coincide with. One. Michael, the only problem with that though is that we we have folks that are if there are. I'd like to know what the status of all the boards are at this point because if we have folks where we're exceeding a certain number, then we have to figure out how to kick certain ones off, and that creates a bigger problem uh, than just what's the. Generic I, I think answer. going forward, we would just have when that person's term uh, expires, we. I was thinking more of as uh, let's try to adopt a policy for future, not remove current. But as you as you're up Rotate for being on. reappointed, that it just that ends, and we and yeah. we and we and we, yeah. Because that's one of the reasons we haven't appointed anybody in nine months is because we didn't want to kick anybody off. We've gone out of our way, but by going out of our way not to appoint anyone, we've we've gotten some that barely make quorum now. And they need. We've got to start appointing somebody to some of these boards. So, uh, Bill, can you make sure Andy gets with the fire chiefs and stuff, and you know, y'all just kind of come up with a good proposal. And maybe even Miss Miss Cox, since she's chairman of that committee, yes, to be involved. Um, committee reports, Economic Development Committee meeting. The Honorable Robert Winkler. Thank you, sir. Um, Economic Development Committee met on Tuesday, September 25th. Um, Councilmember Chad Williams and myself were there for the beginning of it. Councilmember Johnson uh, was able to didn't think he was going to make it, but he was able to get there for a good part of it. So. Um, the meeting was called to order and um, David Swenson provided us an update on C fund requests um, that have been requested out of the economic development C funds <clears throat> and let us know currently how much is still in that account unrestricted and that you know we may get some other requests as new developments are coming in the eastern side of the county for more roads and um, uh, manufacturing uh, facilities. Discussion was also held regarding the Charlotte Regional Partnership. Um, Mr. Swenson informed us that we've been members of the Charlotte Regional Partnership, I think, since it started, um, and they are in the process of looking at 
restructuring, reorganizing that organization, and uh, he just wanted to keep us, make us aware of the fact that that was going on, and that he would keep us informed of the process as it moves forward as far as what economic development recommends we should or shouldn't do with that organization once they figure out what they look like. Um, we had a discussion regarding um, the fee and lieu of process, and we made the decision to have a standing um, economic development committee meeting before each economic development board meeting now so that we can discuss upcoming fee and lieu ofs. Um, and if there's not one coming up, then we just won't have the meeting that month. But we're going to be set now for a monthly meeting for us. And I know that's one of the things by previous council things, we said that we were to notify the full council when we were going to have plan on having a board meeting. So we're putting economic development on a monthly meeting now before the economic development board meets so that we can look at fee and lieu that are coming up and that type of thing. Um, and then we tabled the discussion regarding spec buildings in the county um, to another meeting because we ran out of time. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item is council member new non-agenda comments. Any council member have a comment? Just want to remind everybody that this is Fashion Week, York County Fashion Week, yeah. and there are events all over the county and um, Councilman Roddy and I will be um, kind of emceeing a few things that are going on this week. <laughs> we, we can't tell you everything, but we will tell you that um, Wednesday night is the Lake Wiley. There is a, um, a VIP party Wednesday night, and then the um, Camp Thunderbird will have a big runway show out at Camp Thunderbird. Um, Wednesday night at the Glennon Center in Tika K is the, basically all the middle school children um, are competing for some um, design things. Um, there and those were all those were all Fort Mill schools that responded so that's who will be participating in that next year hopefully we'll have a few more people from middle schools throughout the county and then Friday night is um, going to be the red carpet event at Southern Charm events in Rock Hill and we have a couple of special models that night I'm not going to tell you who they are but um, you will recognize them when you see them <laughs> and um, then on Sunday night we have the award ceremony which will um, feature our own Trent Ferris from the Sheriff's Department um, as a model and that will be um, a fun event. So you can go to York County, um, YorkCountyFashionWeek.com, get tickets, support this. It's, it's, it's a big thing, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Anybody else got a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? Is this thing on? <laughs> Mr. Rod, I'll I was, I was going to bring everybody's attention today. It's October the 1st. And um, I hadn't noticed I have on my breast cancer awareness or cancer awareness necktie. Um, it's amazing how the first person to notice it was a nice young council member um, but just trying to encourage everybody to support all the local organizations or if you know families that's going through or you know breast cancer survivors that's going through um, well, one of the things I like about the month of October is how you see people rally behind whether it's uh, supporting different events different families but these are real issues that affect real people so I just want to kind of do my part to bring that awareness to the breast cancer awareness money and it's just not just for breast cancer that's just the, the image but you have people with Men suffer from various types of cancer as well as women, so it's all types of cancer, but it's just breast cancer. It's the, the, the name of the month, but it, it does include all the different other illnesses that come along in the form of a cancer. So please, and, man. And please. men can get breast cancer, yeah. too. Yeah. Like so one, support, one support. percent, it's not a lot. Yeah. I forgot to say one thing. Uh, well, hang on, I'm gonna get Mr. Um, I'm just gonna remind everyone that this weekend is also the Yorkville Literary Festival, first annual. Um, in downtown York and um, if you ride through downtown or walk through downtown if you do your exercise and you walk the streets you'll see many of the downtown businesses have their windows painted um, there will be they're doing a, a free movie a wrinkle in time at the Sylvia theater this weekend um, and they're gonna have local artists and authors um, several different authors doing uh, book signings talking about their work um, and um, it's going on Friday evening It's the kickoff with a movie I believe and then all day Saturday, um, there's inspirational poetry reading, uh, personal development. Um, Ainsley Moss from local, one of the local um, charitable organizations will be doing uh, speaking. There's historical fiction, mysteries. There's pretty much anything you like to read, they'll have something for you downtown this weekend. That's a Friday night, there's a, the movie and the kickoff, and then all day Saturday at um, all downtown, you won't be able to miss it. So. Ms. Cox. I want to thank uh, Chairman Blackwell for giving me the opportunity to go to the steering committee um, 
at the Association of Counties. I think it. I think I was the last person on the on your list to invite to go, and I actually went. <laughs> no, that's no, he didn't. Know, but I did go. That's not it, true, Miss. He didn't invite me, so that's not true. No, I, I did I, go, <laughs> and I will say this: um, Robert was there as as one of the board members. But I do think that this is a really this is an important area, and I stress this when we talk about going to these conferences. I don't have time to do these things to take half of a day or more than half of a day to go sit around a room is frustrating and to prepare for that before we go but this is a really big deal these issues are where the association of counties takes an issue and they decide how they're going to go to our legislators and what they're going to do and how they're going to push them to do certain things in fact one of the issues that came up was growth management and impact fees and supporting the counties in terms of making sure that we can do that and that we can do it in a way that's efficient and that isn't onerous and that you know, balances the need for the, the other lobbyists that want to come in and not have those impact fees. But I will say this to you, it's critical that we have more of York County presence at these meetings if we want to affect legislation and make sure, I mean, there were many counties who actually proposed that the association take positions on certain issues. This is important because as we know, there's limited things we can do up here as a county council. It takes cooperation with our legislators and change to get some of the things done that we need done here in York County, especially as it relates to growth management. So um, I hope that we have more folks attending and have more opportunities to, to have some input and actually send some things to that to that committee for them to consider. Thank you, Ms. Cox. And it's uh, kind of the brain trust for future laws for the state. Yes, for Ms. Cox. I was just going to say, Ms. Cox brought that up. Um, the latter and, part and of this Mr. month. Mr. Winkler's on the board yes. too. So. And as a board member, I will go ahead and, and remind all council members that the next um, Association of Counties conference is coming up the end of this month in Columbia. Um, and so it's a nice drive. It's not all the way at Hilton Head like the last one was. So you're, you know, we can all do like I did, like I've planned on doing for that one and just drive down in the morning, drive back in the evening and still be in our same, our own bed at night. So. Ms. Cox. I mean, I'm sorry, Ms. Love. <laughs> Ms. Love. So I want to invite all of my fellow council members to the Lake Wiley Recreation um, Park groundbreaking, which will be next Friday the 12th, and um, that's long awaited, and um, we'll have hard hats for everybody if you show up. That's at 10 o'clock in the morning. All righty. So do we have a motion for our exec Nobody signed up for citizen concerns. Do we have a executive session motion I move we go into executive session discuss uh, contractual matter uh, involving project destiny second discussion all those in favor say aye aye those no we'll be back at 7 30. second discussion all those in favor say aye aye those no we are adjourned